criteria, did they, did they all transfer out of the school or uh, are any of them still around? Or? Um, we had, well, we had two graduated, Shelby and Macy, our two captains, um, and probably our two biggest contributors mm -hmm. last year. Um, Amanda Breeze uh, transferred to Iowa State uh, for, she wants to be a dietitian and it's the only school in the state, unfortunately, that has that program. Um, she's not playing volleyball there, just um, transferred there as a student. Uh, and then Elena is, was our freshman last year and she is still going to school at UNI. And then Courtney Kinsel is um, going to be playing at Marquette. So Brittany Nelson with the injuries from last year that lingered over. That yeah, year. actually, unfortunately, with Brittany Nelson, a very actually sad story because um, she actually was back in the spring, and then um, one of her first couple practices back, she retore ACL. So, unfortunately, had a, a second injury. So that's why um, Brittany's not back, and she'll obviously graduate from you and I. I guess how much has that been kind of a setback when you look at the past couple of years with players leaving prior to graduation? We, you know, it's been interesting because we've actually lost 14 um, student athletes over the last two years and seven of those have been graduation. So, you know, you, that's actually a lot for graduation as well. And then I look at every other case has been something different. Um, and it's tough because in the sport of volleyball, you, losing two or three a year is hard. Um, but when you're losing 14 in two years, um, it's a pretty tough thing to come back from sometimes. But what I love is our kids, you know, you're going to have adversity in life. Uh, you're going to have adversity in athletics, and you know it's just another opportunity to to step in there and have maybe people that you don't know can step up and do some things. Um, but I just really love our kids' response uh, because some of those you know has put us in what I've talked about in, in some of the positions being a little bit short. Um, but you know they're handling it like champs. They're doing everything they can to not let that affect what they're doing on the court every day. So I give them a lot of credit for that. Bobby, can you tell us what sort of things are going to need to really develop to be that team that's going back to the NCAA tournament at the end of the season? Our, you know, it's a little bit different for us this year. And, you know, listening to James talk, it, it's a lot about keeping people healthy. Um, we have a lot of um, great players, but we're, we need to keep them healthy. We need to keep them fresh. And that's where the challenges will be for us in, in practice is, you know, trying to work them hard enough um, so that they're ready to compete, but yet uh, being able to, to make sure that they're fresh enough and ready to go for, for the matches. So that's the challenging part for us um, because we, we are not very deep in a lot of positions. Um, and 14 is probably the, the uh, lowest roster we've had in a while. So those are the challenges. So I think, you know, being able to um, be very versatile is going to be huge for us um, because we will probably, you know, if we have an injury here or there, or um, we're going to have to have some people probably playing in positions that they might not think they were going to play in. Uh, so some of those things. But I, I look at this group as really taking those kind of challenges and going with it. You know, I'm not really worried about that. It's more the number sometimes. Um, but the other thing is to continue to get better because this is a team that we're definitely going to be a very different team from the start into the end. And you always are going to be that. But I think there will be significant differences from the, the start of the season, especially um, some of the competition that we're going up against, their response uh, to what's happening on the court. You know, we have one tournament where we're playing three top 25 teams in the same tournament. Um, and you know that that can be motivating and you know things can happen to maybe go the other way. So our response to what's happening um, to those situations will be huge. With a young team and a smaller roster, how do you get competitive practices? That's that's the tough part. That's the challenging part for us as coaches. And you know, we've been able to do that this preseason pretty well. Um, we are fortunate we have a volunteer coach that um, we get on the court, you know, Kalani still got a little game. Um, <laughs> uh, Kim will throw her in there. Um, so we do use the coaches a lot more. Um, you'll see lots of coaches walking around with ice bags on right now, and, and that's why. Um, so we'll use that. But some of it, you know, we'll, it'll be um, things that are – we try to make game-like but maybe not have 12 people on the court. You know, we're, we're constantly tossing balls like, you know, something's happening but really nothing's happening on the other side. So we're going to have to be creative. Um, but, you know, so far during this preseason, I think our kids have done a good job. And as coaches, we're doing okay. But that's a daily evaluation for sure. What do you expect from uh, Kenzie Caldwell in her second year with your program? 
Um, Kinsey, you know, we're expecting her. I think the biggest thing for her is to um, step it up on the leadership side. Um, she had a great year last year for us. Um, she's a very athletically gifted setter. Um, we look for the leadership part to, to continue to improve. And then just her, the mental side of being a Division One setter, um, you know, making decisions. We give her a lot of information from the bench right now or have in the past. And so we're looking for her to grow a little bit more in that way, um, making those decisions on her own. And, and she really has shown that over the preseason, has done a great job with that. Uh, with the thinner roster, I mean, you know, generally you have a grinded out style of play where you wear other teams out. But with a thinner roster, we have to be a little more offensive or? Yeah, you know, and that the unfortunate thing is we're we're definitely that kind of team again. Not unfortunate, but that's our type of team this year too. We're we're definitely a team that's going to grind it out. Um, so that will be challenging for us, and that's why I think our practice situation is going to be di very different. I mean, I think there's going to be weeks depending on how um, the matches go on the weekends that we're going to practice very little, um, or you know maybe practice but no jumping you know just different things that are going to to help us keep our kids leg fresh because i you know that is very much our style this year as well um, we don't have a ton of big guns that are going to uh, save us um, in in terms of just being able to side out with one swing um, but i like that kind of play i love the gritty kind of play that we have but that, that again is part of the challenges that we'll have how good do you feel about developing this team or building this team around the four starters that are back? Um, really good, just because I think, um, you know, we have a core that I think um, now have the experience to be able to do things, um, grow more their game, and then we have enough people that I feel um, have had a taste of it. You know, we got a lot of people in last year, even though it might have been a, a game here or there, that uh, I think are going to be huge contributors for us. Um, and I like the leadership from the four that are coming back. Uh, Haley and Erica are two captains this year, and I think both of them, you know, there's a lot of things that are even different from last year that, you know, they are definitely hold their team accountable. Um, they're demanding in a very positive way. And some of those types of things I think are really going to help us um, to improve and, and get better each day. So given the makeup of this roster, and you mentioned with the non-conference schedule coming right up, how tougher is the, the learning curve going to be these next couple of weeks headed towards those first competitions? I think, you know, the tough part for us is just because of the really challenging schedule is being able to put that all in perspective and, you know, see our team now and understand where we want to be. Um, you know, it, it's probably one of the ch most challenging schedules we've had. And just by, I think, sheer numbers, you know, that makes it a little bit difficult, like we've talked about. Um, but again, you know, you, we have to be able to get something from every, every match, no matter what the situation. It's like that every year. You know, we've had matches where we've struggled, but we're, we're getting something out of it, whether it's what we need to do better or things we need to do differently, um, people in different positions. I think, um, you know, even though we have a smaller roster and maybe a smaller number of kids that have the potential to be on the court for us, where they are is going to be huge for us. You know, we, I, I couldn't tell you at all where our kids would be right now. And part of it, we have a few injuries that I'm not sure if they'll be back for the first game or not yet. So that's part of it. But, um, you know, it, we have some versatility, but I think there's um, definitely going to be a, a lineup that, that needs to happen, let's put it that way. And we'll come through by the end of the season, or hopefully even more towards conference play. Who are the players that are in question for that opener? Um, Erica just got hurt today. She's the question mark, unfortunately. Um, and we have a few people that um, Kayla has been out for a little over a week, and she's just starting to come back. I think she'll she'll definitely be ready. Um, she'll be playing, but she hasn't played for a week. So, um, but Erica is the biggest question mark right now. What's her injury? Um, she has a pulled hip flexor. Well, looking at the middle position with with, with um, you, you have Kayla back with some experience. Obviously, uh, she she played at a high level with her club team and such too. Uh, and, and then who do you look at as, as another option there in the in the middle? Um, right now we are we're training Autumn Litz and um, Jaden Blanchfield, who is a transfer. Um, so those are the two kids that we're training besides Kayla, um, and right and that's it for right now. So um, and Autumn and Jaden, they're they're two. It's one of those you know we kind of have when you have your setters, you have two very different setters. Both are better at one thing than the other. We've had that a lot over the years, um, and they're two very different 
styles of play. Jaden is very small, but very quick, up very high, up very quick. Uh, and Autumn is just a little bit not a little bit, a lot bigger, um, but maybe a little bit slower laterally. So I, I look for us to really be using them both um, and maybe depending on who we're playing, um, which one will even be the starter for the match. Can you talk a little bit about how like, that fell into place with Jaden bringing her in from Idaho and, and what you knew about her coming into your program? Uh, we saw her uh, at a tournament in Denver, actually, and um, we we were on her right before she made the commitment to go to a junior college. So she actually transferred from a junior college after her first year. Um, but originally, she played middle, um, but originally we were recruiting her more as a right side pin uh, position. But um, because she's had the experience in the middle and because of our situation in the middle right now, um, that's why we have her in there. So she's somebody... I've always talked about wanting to um, do a three middle system again. It's a type of offense that I absolutely love to run because you have so many options offensively. I think in the future, um, we have a few good recruits coming in that can help us in the middle. I think I look for her to be somebody that can help us maybe run that system again. So very versatile kid as well. Um, probably playing a position she never thought she would in Division One volleyball right now, but you know, she's she works hard. She's one of the most competitive players we have on the team, and you'll see that um, when she's out on the court. What, what are you looking at as your options on the pens for this year? Um, you know, we've we've been training uh, several people, uh, Lindsay and Lee uh, for sure at the pin, um, Erica obviously, uh, but we've also been training uh, Ashley Sinnott and Amy Held, our libero from last year, and Ashley was a DS for us last year, um, and they are more uh, the L2 ball controller you know they're not going to put the ball away every time, but they're going to they're going to have shots. Um, they're able to um, help us blocking in terms of maybe taking areas away. You know they're not going to be the big stuff block pins, but um, both of them have actually been doing a really good job. So part of that is you know giving us some options if there are injuries or um, if we need people to take a break. You know obviously it's hard if you have one of them in as the libero. They obviously for that game cannot sub in, but. Um, but that's definitely given us a little bit more depth on the pin side. Being a player, an assistant coach, and now a head coach for a great span of those four years, I think you look yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. You still look good. Uh, but, <laughs> but, I mean, what is, talk about the evolution of this program, and I mean, in, in, in comparison to women's sports and how it's grown. Yeah, I think, you know, that's the one thing that I'm so excited for this anniversary because it, like I told our team in our first meeting, it just has given us an opportunity to really sit back and think about it because it's kind of like every season. You don't really think about that season and what's all gone on until after the season and you're preparing for the banquet and then you get to sit and think about everything that's gone on and all the neat people that were a part of it. So now, you know, we get to sit back and think about really what's gone on over the last 40 years. And, you know, it's just been so many people that have been a huge part of that tradition and I think that's the biggest part of it is the people and when you you know I'm sure we'll have a Raj talking and when he talks about what it was like when we first started and even the coaches before him and where it has come today and and all the people that have um, worked so hard to help build that um, that's the part that I can't wait for is to listen to those stories and I know I, I told our team also, you know, there's been a lot of teams that have had a lot of success on the court, um, but I think what they're going to talk about is probably not a lot of the on-court things. You know, there's going to be a few matches here and there that, you know, really stand out, um, but I think it's going to be more about the people and feeling that you're part of something really special and, and a family, and uh, I'm just looking forward and really hoping that we get a, a great turnout for that. You mentioned what you know. Well, you need a little offense here and there in the middle. So how much are you gonna look for Kinsey for that a little bit? For Sutter's dump here and there. I know last year toward the end of the year she really got in the flow of that yeah. with Kalani and working with her. How much are you seen that this year out of her? And that's.